<laughs> hey everyone, how's it going? I'm just gonna do a quick double check, make sure that everything is working. A lot of times people associate with... I've got an ad that I'll have to skip. I've got everything up here so I can read your guys' comments. And... <laughs> there we go. I think we're officially live. Um, how is everyone doing? If you're here and you're actually watching this, just say hi in the comments and let me know if there's any audio issues because sometimes there's those glitches in the system and I want to make sure everything's good. So far... Hey, Tony! Tanya, you made it! How was your trip? I think you were on a trip. You said you were just making it into town just in time. It's good to see it. Sounds good? Okay, yes. Marty, Mr. Marty Morissette himself, the big guy, the one, the only, Mr. Pierre Outdoor, Pierre Extreme. Just kidding, you're not called that anymore. <laughs> I can't say your name, but I love you. It's good to see you. Okay, I'm glad to hear that everything is looking good and sounding good. As you guys can see, there's a little bit of an explosion here. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the back country, or in this case, uh, my home office. I was gonna film this in the studio here at my house in my garage, but it kind of looks like an explosion just went off down there. Um, it kind of looks like an explosion went off here as well. But I also wanted to do it outside, but I wasn't sure if the internet was gonna hold up and make that work. So instead, I set things up here and I'm gonna try to make that ha happen. Hey, Cool Quest! You guys, go check out Cool Quest. Follow them. Honestly, probably one of the most like active backpacking Instagrammers out there. I love following their stories. It's Canadian and American, so you get the best of both worlds. Although, clearly, there's one that's better. Um, <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Jacob, it's good to see you. If it's not broken, fix it. How's it going, man? Man, it is good to see everybody here. Um, what a- Maddie! <laughs> oh, Maddie. You're the good-looking one. Let's be honest. You and Wanda. What a pair. Anyways, you guys, we've got a lot to cover, and I'm really excited to get right into it. Um, I have some gear here that I have not even unboxed yet. I put in a massive gear order of just a few gadgets and knickknacks and odds and ends, probably about two and a half weeks ago, and it's come within that past two and a half weeks, and I've literally been saving it so that I can open it up with you guys and unbox some of it. Some of it I can't even remember what I got, to be honest. There is one package that I really wanted to get in time here, but it's gone missing, um, which really stinks. It was from Kanok. Kanok? Knock? C-N-O-K, C-N-O-C. We all know what that brand is, but like nobody knows how to pronounce it. I'm just, let's be real. <laughs> um, anyways, I've got some gear here. I've also got some gear that I've been kind of holding back for the past, you know, few months, maybe even some of it last season that I've never shown on the channel. Some of it I've been wanting to. Some of it I just filmed yesterday. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some of that. So I may get to that gear a little bit later on, but first things first, I want to unbox the stuff that I haven't even seen yet. But before we get there, I've got a really big announcement to make. A really big announcement to make. I know over the past year, uh, you may not have seen a ton from me here on the channel, and I just want to let you guys know, even though I may not always be producing content, I am always thinking backcountry forward. I am always behind the scenes, getting gear, testing gear, thinking of new gear, uh, new ideas and new video ideas, uh, working on some of the more strategic side of things like who this channel is really all about, who it's for and how to best benefit and serve those people, uh, as well as just kind of some of the more behind the scenes side of things. So I'm always in backcountry forward mode, even if you guys don't see any videos from me, um, but I am hoping to finally take all that work that I've done over the past year or so and really begin putting out content again. I have some videos in the backlog that I'm going to start releasing here in the next uh, week or two and I'm going to be creating more and more videos in the coming weeks and months and then I'm going to go MIA for a little while because I'm going on a trip, a really big trip. And while I'm on that trip, I, you can bet I will be filming. 
I will be recording, I will be posting probably over on Instagram. By the way, if you don't follow Backcountry Forward on Instagram, go check it out on Instagram, go follow me. You can see the link is in the description. In fact, most of the gear that we're gonna be talking about will be linked in the comments or the description as I get to that. But anyways, the big announcement. First, before we get to the big announcement, Oh, Tyler just spoiled it. Way to go, Tyler. <laughs> but yes, I am doing a big hike. Um, so what is the big hike? For those of you who maybe haven't followed me, I've posted a little bit on Instagram. I'm doing something called the Great Divide Trail. It's a through hike. In fact, it's considered one of the most remote, most challenging, and most grueling or wild through hikes in North America. Uh, a couple years ago, there was a lady who did it named Brazil Nut, and she was the first one, or she has the fastest record for doing a yo-yo. She wasn't the first yo-yo. Dan and Tara Durston did that together, and I love their videos. You guys can go check that out on YouTube. Totally inspiring. But Brazil Nut got the fastest, the fastest known time, and she's an experienced through hiker. She's done the Triple Crown in the States, the PCT, the AT, and the CDT twice. She's also done some other long through hikes. And I asked her, how did the Great Divide Trail, the GDT, stack up to that? And she said, by far, it was harder than any through hike she's done so far. So what have I gotten myself into? And where did this come from? So I won't bore you guys with all the details, but long story short, ever since I was a kid, my family would go to a specific little region here in the Canadian Rockies. And ever since I was a kid, I'd look at the big map. And I'd look at the day hikes that we would do and my dad would be planning out and there was like this whole region that we could never go hiking in and I would ask my dad like why can't we go there and he'd be like oh that's because that's backpacking and that's how I first found out about backpacking and he explained what that was and I was just like that's the coolest idea ever one day I want to do that years go by and finally I would go backpacking but before that I would pull out that map and I noticed a little dot, 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 all the way up from one corner up to the top left corner. And along that, when I was a kid, I'd, I'd follow it and I'd see these words called Great Divide Trail. And I asked my dad what that meant and he explained that it was a trail that followed the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide of North America, which is what the CDT follows as well, goes from the south all the way up to the north to the Bering Sea, technically speaking. And it is the divide which geographically marks where the water flows east or the water flows west. I know, a bunch of science-y science stuff we don't really need to talk about. Long story short, the CDT follows that divide in the states from Mexico all the way up to the border of Canada. The Great Divide Trail is its younger sister, but far more remote and wild younger sister, and it continues exactly where the CDT ends at Waterton Lakes National Park and continues up through the crest of the Canadian Rockies through some beautiful stunning land. Now here's the cool thing. For, goodness, it's almost five years ago when I started backpacking. I chose an area that I was familiar with by Upper Kananaskis Lakes, that same region that me and my family would go camping every year or into the little cabin there. And I chose just a random spot on that map that looked easy and, and I could do it and I went for it. Me and my buddy Tyler, we went, by the way, Tyler, me and Tyler started this channel, Backcountry Forward, together. He's now gone off and started another channel called Remaining Wild. So you can go check him out. I think he's in the comments. There he is. He just commented, yeah, that's Remaining Wild, that's Tyler. So um, anyways, we went to this little campsite called Forks, and then we went up to Turbine Canyon. And little did I know at the time, but that was the GDT, at least part of it. So my first ever backpacking trip was on the Great Divide Trail. Ever since I was a kid, I was familiar with backpacking because of the Great Divide Trail. And now here I am, all these years later, and I'm preparing to hike it. I never would have thought that I ever would have been able to, but a couple years ago when I saw Dan and Tara's videos, I was watching them and just enamored. And there was something in my heart that just said, one day you're gonna do this. And I thought, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way I could never do that. I'm not a through hiker. I'm not one of those guys who quits their day job and goes hiking, and I'm not. In the long story short, I asked my boss and he said, yeah, it's the trip of a lifetime, go for it. So the Great Divide Trail is 750 miles, 1,200 kilometers, 
It goes from Waterton Lakes National Park up through Jasper, through Banff, through Jasper, through the tallest mountain in the Canadian Rockies, which is Mount Robson, up into a little place, little in the middle of nowhere, called Kakwa Provincial Park. And my plan is to hike all seven sections of it. If I can. <laughs> I am totally overwhelmed, totally, not terrified, but daunted by the fact, and I'm going to be leaving, actually for all you Americans, you'll love this, I'll be starting that trail on July 4th this year. I'll be heading down there June 30th for a couple of days of camping nearby and then getting on trail July 4th and running until September 4th, I believe. So a total of two months and I'm really excited. So what am I looking for in this hike? Jacob, that is a great, great question. Um, yeah, take it one day at a time. I'm going to have to. I was thinking about that actually yesterday. I woke up with the thought of when I get up on day 23 I'm still gonna have over 30 days still left to hike and that fact is really daunting but like you said I just got to take it one day at a time so Jacob what am I looking to get out of this hike that's a really good question um, I'm not scared of a lot of things there's not a lot of things that scare me just to be honest the two things that really scare me are my involvement and in what I do uh, for my, my job and my what I believe is my calling, which is I'm involved in my church, and I call that ministry. And so serving God's people and serving the people that God has put into my life, that is a huge responsibility, and that frankly kind of scares me. The other thing was this trail called the Great Divide Trail. I don't know how, and I don't know what it means, but I believe that somehow those two are intertwined. And what was crazy was early this year, or, or early last year rather, when I finally came to this realization that I'm going to do this, the fear that I had in both of those areas left. I was still really daunted, and I still am. It's an overwhelming thought. But I have a feeling like, for me, this is going to be overcoming a form of fear in my life. Um, a form of indecisiveness, maybe even some insecurity if I'm honest. Um, I don't consider myself a super insecure person, but as I begin like looking at and asking the questions, can I even do this? Do I have what it takes? Will I actually manage to do this? And sitting here in front of you guys and just saying, honestly, that's what I'm planning on doing is <laughs> incredibly intimidating. So I really hope to grow as a person. I hope to encounter uh, God and, and who he's made me to be. Because that's the first thing I said when I went backpacking for the first time. Me and Tyler were walking out on day three of our trip. And he said, I can't wait to get home to my bed. <laughs> I think he said that on every trip I've ever gone on with him. Uh, except for, I think, one, Tonkin Valley. But anyways, um, I th said to him, I feel like I could spend another week out here. I feel like this is what I was made to do. And I felt that on almost every single trip that I've gone on. So I just feel like there's going to be a, an immense amount of freedom and liberty and self-reflection and, and overcoming the challenge and the hurdles that I feel like sometimes hold me back. Um, I'm going to see if there's any other good qu questions here. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an amazing experience. Um, ooh, did I train for this hike and how did I train? Great question. Great question. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler, Tonkin Valley was a turning point. It was so cool. Uh, did I train? Yes. No. Yes, not enough. And yes, now. <laughs> um, so I would say like the past few years have actually been training for this hike in some form or another. Um, I've been expanding my backpacking experience, my backpacking repertoire, my skills. I've started going on solo hikes and I love them. Uh, I've started like just really honing in on some of my gear. I feel like I have a system, a kit, that I'm totally ready to take into the backcountry, and yet before this hike, I'm changing it all, probably, maybe. We'll get to that in a second. But, um, so I've been training over the past couple of years as I expand my experience as a backpacker in general. I have not trained physically nearly enough, and that's actually something I am like kicking into like full game mode this week coming up. I am getting out there. I have, I'm going to be finding a really strategic plan, getting a really strategic plan that matches my body and my needs. One of the benefits that I have is I walk a lot, every day, a lot. My job is an active job. I clean a massive facility every day. And so I hike, or not hike, but I walk on average 13 to 15 
kilometers. I'm trying to think of what that is in miles. Under 10, it's like probably like nine, eight, nine miles. 10 would be 16. So yeah, eight to nine miles every single day, just on average. It's not uncommon for me to walk 20 to 25 kilometers in a day just at work. So I am really used to walking. Now, walking on flat level ground is not the same as climbing up and down mountains, and that's what I've really got to work on conditioning. So that's what I'm really turning my attention to, as well as working on my core strength and some of my stabilizing muscles like my knees and my ankles. I'm actually going to be looking to probably talk to a physiotherapist and getting some advice from them as well, uh, whether that's the full plan that they offer or just a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, Millennial Mountaineer, if you go and check out her videos, their videos, it's uh, Brian and Krista. She did the GDT last year. Was it last year? Yes, last year. Her videos are awesome and she's a physiotherapist. So I think who better to help make sure that I'm in the right shape and right kind of physical and muscular structure than a physiotherapist who's done the GDT. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling. Uh, that's kind of me. What kind of base weight and overall weight am I aiming for? These are great questions, but I want to get to the gear. Um, I love seeing what you, some of you guys are saying. So base weight is really sort of unknown because some of this gear that I'm going to be unboxing tonight, especially this really big box right here, can you guys see that? Yes, you can. Um, is going to help determine what I am carrying. I actually have a couple opportunities to try a few prototypes on this trail, which is also a daunting task, but Long and short, there might be a company that wants to partner with me and send me with a few prototypes that I take on the GDT and test and be able to give them back some feedback. And as I do, I'll also be sharing my experiences with that gear with you guys as I go along. So without further, <laughs> yes, cool quest, it's time to get into the gear. Jesse is rambling. How long have I been talking? 18 minutes too long. Let's talk gear. So I'm gonna start with a few things that are really special that actually came from a few subscribers. Um, who has seen the ramen bomb? Who's had a ramen bomb? If you have, a, have had a ramen bomb, you know what I'm talking about, right? Come on, ramen bombs? Let me know in the chat. Um, if you have had a ramen bomb, you know, and if you've seen my video on the ramen bomb, it's by far my most popular video, Everyone was like blowing their lids because I brought out a whole can of spam. Um, yeah, everyone's saying they've had the ramen bombs. Yeah, so I had a full can of spam. And a guy named Andrew Wolf said, Jesse, you've got to get the individual spam singles. In fact, everyone said that. But up here in Canada, you can't get them. So Andrew took it upon himself to send me not one not two but like a like a few different spam singles which i am stoked about because you can bet i am going to be having a ramen bomb on the gdt at least at some point so andrew thank you so much i don't think he's in the chat uh, but i'm excited but i also released a video with some different options um and tanya browning who is in the chat reached out to me and she wanted to send me some different things that she had recommended for different meals on the backpacking trips that she's used. So Tanya, thank you so much. Go and check out her channel, you guys. Give her a follow and a subscribe. She's got some great videos of, of some of the trips and trails that she's been on. Really beautiful scenery. She does a really good job of just capturing what she's seeing as she's going out there. I haven't opened this yet. <laughs> I've told her like for weeks that I was looking forward to it, so I have no idea. So let's open it up. Thank you so much, Tanya, before I even look at this. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is something else we can't get up here. Man, I feel like we're just impoverished when it comes to like pre-packaged food up here in Canada. This is amazing. Seriously, in America, you guys don't know how blessed you are to have star-kissed chicken. We just got pre-packaged tuna in like vacuum sealed packs. Tuna up here like, what? I think a couple years ago was the first time I saw it. We haven't had chicken yet. Now I can get chicken. Thank you, Tanya. There's even more in here, more chicken, the buffalo stuff. Oh, this will pull pork. There's pulled pork. I can have a pulled pork ramen bomb that is amazing tanya thank you so much for that that is 
awesome and it is all in this nice package so it didn't explode while it was flying through the air to come to Canada thank you so much Tanya so that's that we're gonna dive into what's left here in the box but before I do eat one right now <laughs> if you guys want to see me eat something right now let me know in the comments if not I'm not going to Marty can't be the only one who suggests it um... <laughs> Jacob said, I'm the one who made you try the ramen bomb. And uh, you and your dad said, no, nope, no, nope, but you know, you know where it's at, Jacob. That's awesome. Okay. Tyler also, Tyler's vote doesn't count. I'm sorry, you guys. That doesn't, that doesn't count. Nobody else wants to see this. So let's open up something else that I am pretty sure I know what this is. I got this from Amazon. I'm not 100% sure. But if it is what I'm expecting it to be, it is. It is. Um... I will put this on for you guys really quickly. It is a something that you'll see a lot of through hikers have, and it's a good hint for what I will be getting at some point. I'm trying to make it loft up at some point this spring or summer. <laughs> it's a down hood um, from Aegis Max. Oh wow, that's puffed up already a fair amount. That's more than I expected it to be. Um, so, with this, I'm hoping to get a down quilt to transition from sleeping bags to quilts. Do you guys, any of you guys use quilts? If you use a quilt, let me know in the comments what brand of quilt you use, because I'm looking at a few brands. I'm leaning towards one at least to test. They might be sending me a prototype as well, but I know there's a couple great brands out there, UGQ, EE, uh, Enlightened Equipment that is, and Outdoor Vitals, as well as Hammock Gear. Uh, do any of you guys use quilts? Anyways, this is going to be my new fashion piece while on the GDT as I sleep sleeping attire but i'll also probably use this like you know on a really cold day because oh that's too hot wow that's way hotter than i thought it was going to be um up here in canada even in the middle of summer you guys it gets down below freezing at night like not just once in a while but pretty commonly like i think i've only had one trip where it wasn't even close to below freezing um yeah literally only one trip um and that was wonderful but I'm really excited to use this and test this out more. Oh, it's like lofted up way more than I expected. Some of the reviews I was reading were saying that I needed to like put it in the dryer before using it. It's pretty good. So far, so good. Okay, moving on to other things. Um, oh, cool quest said they just ordered a quilt from UGQ. Gary recommends UGQ or Enlightened Equipment. Um, hammock gear. Uh, Tanya, what kind of hammock gear? Well, I guess they have the Econ... What's it called? The Econ bur Burrow Down? No, that's not what it's called. What's, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called. But either way, the hammock gear. I really love hammock gears like Forest Green. Mm. Man, if I could get that with their orange, you know what I'm talking about? Backcountry forward colors or with the silver. I was thinking that too. Um, oh, Tyler's looking for a quilt remaining wild. You guys went with custom roots. Oh, Z Packs. I just found out, Yoon, that Z Packs had quilts. I don't know how I missed this. Um, probably because like 98% of what Z Packs offers is way too expensive for me. Um, but hey, maybe one day. Okay. Let's open. No, let's open this next. Um, because I already kind of opened it. Uh, I got some. This is from Valhalla Pure. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. That's too good to share. Yeah, I got a couple of packages of that, uh, as well as, let's see. Um, this bad boy. Now, I love my GSI mug, and um, I really love my GSI mug. I don't really want to say goodbye to my GSI mug, but when you're through hiking, sometimes you need to sacrifice. So I got a smaller Sea to Summit X cup. And the reason I got this is because one of the other pieces of gear I wasn't sure if I was going to get to talk to, but I am, is I plan on using the Tokes Titanium 550 mil pot with its lid and the GS or the Sea to Summit X cup fits right in the bottom with a stove canister. I think I have to put it upside down. Upside down and it fits right there. I'll have to have my um, stove separately but my stove doesn't fit in the 550 mil pot anyways with the canister in there the other option that i have 
for my uh, cook pot is I might get a slightly larger cook pot at 650 mils. Uh, what size do you guys use? Do you guys have the 550, 550 mil pot, a 750 mil pot, a one liter pot? What do you guys use up to this year? Everything I've used is one liter. And I really like that because I usually, I often cook in my pot sometimes, or I really want two cups of water, like four cups of water, one for my GSI mug so I can have some hot chocolate or coffee, and then one for my meal. In this case, I'll just have to boil twice, uh, one for my meal, and then some for my uh, hot drink. But that's why I got the X cup. I'm not a thousand percent sure I'm going to be using this. I might bring my GSI mug, but I'm planning to start out with this. One of the things that the G GDT has is every like five to seven days, um, you stop off in some form of civilization. I'm not gonna call them towns because sometimes they're not towns and sometimes they're just really small towns. Um, sometimes they're like a ski um, resort or something like that. Anyways, my girlfriend's going to be coming out every time, not every time, but a few times along the trail to meet me at one of those locations. And I'm going to have a backpack full of like extra spare gear that she'll bring me just in case I need something. So if I decide after the first um, few days that or a few rounds that I, this just isn't enough for me, you can bet I'll be switching to my GSI mug, which I love. And the reason, the thing I didn't show you guys was if you guys haven't tried Backpackers Pre um, Pantry Creme Brulee, I don't like Backpackers Pantry except for their creme, creme Brulee. Their desserts in general are amazing. This is by far the most amazing thing to have in the backcountry when it's cold. You're supposed to make it with cold water, but pro tip, put a little hot water in there. Mm. So good. Okay, next thing. This. Every through hiker buys something from this store at some point in their life. It just seems like every through hiker uses them. And that is Lightsmith. I got a bunch of things from Lightsmith because they make just really ultra light gear for really affordable. So um, there we go. Uh, the first thing I got, which I was really interested to try out, is a couple of toothbrushes. Two options. One's lighter than the other, but just by like a couple of grams. Look at this little guy. It's a little thumb toothbrush. You know, there's a few different hacks out there I've tried. Um, <laughs> I even tried getting some of those like silicon slip on your fingers dog toothbrushes. <laughs> I can't believe I just admitted that. But yeah, I tried that. It just, it just didn't work. It didn't cut the plaque at all. But these were so affordable. Um, I figured I'd get both of them because I kind of wanted to make sure that uh, they work. So small ultralight toothbrushes. Along with that, I don't think I have them on me. Uh, the other thing I'll be doing to super save weight on the mouth hygiene is toothpaste tabs. I've done all sorts of different crazy things with toothpaste. I've used the small toothpaste containers and then I like squeezed it into a bunch of straws and cut the straws and then like sealed it off with wax, which really worked for a while, but is a headache to make. And then I found toothpaste tablets. You just throw them in your mouth, chew it up, take your toothbrush, brush, you're good to go. Well, spit it out and then you're good to go. So that's something I'm going to be doing. I got more stuff from Lightsmith. Um, oh, uh, we'll get to that maybe in a second. Oh, I've got a super small uh, knife. I have a little Swiss Army knife, but I don't ever really use it, but sometimes you need it for gear repairs. So this is just an X-Acto blade and it weighs like, I have my weigh scale here. You guys are, are you guys interested in weights? Anybody interested in weights? <laughs> Woof, thanks Linda. Yeah, you know me. I'm just, I'm just the dog over here. Uh, it is, it's so amazingly tiny. Baby toothbrushes. I had aren't those the same ones where they like slide on your finger and try those? I like had looked at some of them, but none of them looked like they'd work. Um, this is reflective gear line. Anyways, we'll get to that in a second. Man, I'm making a huge mess. Do you guys care about weights? Should I be weighing some of this stuff? Do you want to know? I'm assuming not. This. Who watches Dan Becker? Who? Don't tell me if you love him or you hate hate him because I don't really care. What I just want to know is who's seen him. I found out about this from Dan Becker. <laughs> and ever since I saw it, I thought, wow, this is way bigger than I, I needed. I got two sizes. I got the small one and the big one. And ever since I saw it from him, I thought I need to get one of these. And uh, boom, look at that. 
it's a super ultralight pillow. No, I would never use this pillow as a pillow for my head. How ridiculous is that? Like, look at that. It has like no structure to it, none whatsoever. It does have these cool straws where you just basically put the straw in, work with any straw, and that's how you have to deflate it. I'm gonna actually try you seeing if I can make it work with a tent peg. I'm not sure if I will, but what these will be for, I got two sizes because I wasn't sure, they're super ultra light, um, is I'm a side sleeper. So I use these between my knees. Yeah. Look at that, perfect knee pillow. What else do you need? No extra weight. It's got some softer fabric. I had bought, I had gotten something in the mail for, that was a mail packaging that was just the exact same, but it was that like normal plastic, just not that comfortable. So I'm looking forward to those. Moving right along. Oh, I also got some uh, Nilo Flume bags. Uh, that's just um, kind of waterproof pack liners as well as odor proof. So I'll be using those. Uh, something else that came in the mail from Valhalla Pure. I had my scissors up here. Um, tell me, what do you guys use to filter um, your, not the pillow, Marty says. Yeah, I know. Dan Becker was hating on that pillow, which is funny, because the first person I heard it from was him, and he's all like, I can't believe I would use this pillow. And he's like, yeah, I wouldn't use it either, but for a knee pillow, come on. So. What do you guys use to filter water? My wife asked if we are gonna see the girlfriend. Um, I don't know. Uh, she might be in the chat. I haven't seen her so far. I doubt she'll say hi, but she might be there. Uh, what do you guys use to filter your water? This is the Catadyne Bee Free filter. A replacement filter. It's a replacement because Last year, I was testing out my Catanine Bee Free. I haven't done a video on this yet because one of the things that this vi this is really known for is that it's like tons of different reviews have said it slows down after a few trips. I used it for one season and by the end of that season, it was so incredibly slow. It was slower than my Sawyer, Sque or Sawyer, um, not micro, the Sawyer Mini, the Sawyer Mini that I used to use in my hydration pack um, that I used for three years. It was slower than that. Now, sometimes you just get a dud. So I've gotten a new filter. I'm going to test it out again, but I've also got my backup option, which I have never used and why I got something from Kanak, the Sawyer Squeeze. This is what every through hiker uses. I was really optimistic with the Catadine Bee Free, but I might be switching to the Sawyer Squeeze. I'm done with the Sawyer Mini, that's for sure. It's just too slow. This has a faster flow rate. It's more durable. Um, it's highly recommended, so I'm gonna give it a go. But I might start out with the Catadine, and like I said, put this in the backpack for my girlfriend to bring every time she sees me, and if worse comes to worse, I can switch it out. Because this never stopped filtering, it just got really slow. So if for a few days I have to use a slow filter, it's not the end of the world. Um, what do you guys use though? I'm said. Oh, Canuck. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate that. Um, the Bee Free. Cool quest. You guys have been using the Bee Free. Have you noticed any issues with it slowing down? I know I talked to Maddie. I'm not sure if he's still in the system. Uh, Maddie said his hasn't slowed down. Justin Outdoors. Gotta love Justin Outdoors. Um, my boy Justin. He says his hasn't given him any flack. So it just seems like I'm the only one out there. Well, I'm not the only one out there, but I'm the only one out of my friends who have had an issue with it. But I've looked online and there's tons of different reviews that say the same thing. Even Dan Becker, um, uh, he said that he loves it and recommends it. Wouldn't use it for a long trip because after one season, he had to replace it. He didn't really say why he had to replace it. But in my estimation, you shouldn't have to replace a $50 filter every year. It, no. No, it just doesn't work. So I'm, I'll give it another chance though. I'm giving it another chance. Okay, good to know, good to know. You guys use the squeeze, backpacking with Buckley. You use the Canuck and the squeeze. Is it working well with you guys? Alrighty, alrighty. Okay, so next thing. Oh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning. 
P.S. I finally got more Backcountry Forward stickers. Um, I also have some Backcountry Forward stickers that look like this um, that are more cut to the shape or the circle. Either or. Um, if you guys would be interested in, in some stickers, uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, I'd be really interested in uh, maybe sending some of those out. I have to be careful because it can get really time consuming and pricey sending out stickers. But let me know in the chat. I'm not saying I'm going to send them out, but if people are interested in that, maybe I can figure out to do that in some sort of giveaway or like a follow me on Instagram and meet me there. But either way, Jacob says he would love one. Cool Quest would swap stickers with me. Um, it's Backpacking with Buckley will swap stickers. Hey, by the way, check out Backpacking with Buckley's um, channel. Um, he's great. Love it. He actually got, I think I'm pretty sure with you, yeah, Buckley, it was you. You just did the the shower, uh, the super ultralight shower. I actually ordered that, but it's what's in the package that's gone missing. That's I'm like calling UPS, trying to get them to sort out where it went. So I really hope that comes because that would be handy on the trail. Um, would you guys be interested in me doing a comparison video between the Sawyer and the Bee Free? Because I plan on doing that. So stay tuned. <laughs> Next thing is from Vargo. Um, how are we doing for time here? I don't want to be going too long. Vargo, um, what's your guess? What did I get from Vargo? This is something I'm definitely going to be bringing. I've eyed it for a long time. I finally splurged and got it. By the way, all this gear, if you're interested, is in the description. In the, uh, the description. By the way, to get to the description, just go down to where the comments are. There's a little arrow um, right beside uh, those first kind of lines and you can click that to the right there or you can click the see more. I've been wanting this for a while. Uh, these are just some titanium stakes. I got those just in case and uh, it's for my poop. It's for my poop. Yep, that's what this is for. It's the Vargo Dig Dig. Um, super ultralight titanium shovel but the main reason I wanted it was because it's longer and it's got these serrated teeth. Um, I was using the like UST little aluminum shovel, which I think is technically lighter than this. If I'm honest right now, this feels really heavy because I think this like cardboard tag might weigh as much as the shovel itself. Um, but it was so small and so hard to grip um, to dig things out up here in the Canadian Rockies where there's lots of roots and rocks. The serrated teeth will just really help cut through some of those mini roots and like find like, you know, clutter that's holding you back. Because when you gotta go, you gotta go. So, that's from that. Okay, a few last things. A few small last gadgets that we'll talk about before we get to the big stuff. I know what you guys are waiting for. We're getting the big stuff. This is really cool. Oh my goodness, should I blow it right now? This is dangerous. This is C-Sense Safety Blaster. Now, I'm not primarily planning on using this as like a whistle or an emergency device. I want to use it to scare off bears. Um, shouting out, yo bear, hey bear, like every 200 meters for 60 days straight is going to get really tiring. So being able to just go, you have to blow really hard, but I don't know if I should. Safety horn, blow here. What? I don't know. I'm using it wrong. <laughs> what? Ah! Woo! Wow. That was, <laughs> that was loud. That <laughs> was louder than I thought. It might be more uncomfortably loud than I was expecting it to be. Anyways, Justin Outdoors told me about this. He's been testing it. So I'm really excited to take that out. And I'm going to message him because he said there was something that you could cut off and you didn't need. So I'm going to find that out. Other thing that I've gotten recently is uh, what everybody else has out there. It is the uh, Nightcore. Um, the Nikkor uh, NU25. I've upgraded my headlamp, uh, switched out the first ever headlamp I got, which was just one of the cheap ones from Amazon, which honestly do the trick just great. Like why, 
why bother? Those ones are like 10 bucks, 11 bucks, and uh, this one's like 36. You can do great with this other ones, but at only an ounce, this one's better. So I figured I'd upgrade after looking at it for years. So that's the last of the small little trinkets for back, no bear bells, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> you mean dinner bells? Sorry, I should have done. You mean dinner bells? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but in the hiking community up here, it's like the running joke of saying like, dinner bells, backpacking bear bells, dinner bells. No, no, I won't do dinner bells. Hey, Gary. Wow. Thank you so much for the super chat. Wow. I like really, really ap appreciate that. Uh, thanks. That, that means a lot. You're my first super chat. <laughs> That's awesome. Um... There we go. Yeah. So backpacking with Buckley, you were the one with the shower. That's so great. Safe, yeah, honestly, I'm really stoked with this. It was really loud in here, probably not something to do at home, uh, but I'm gonna take this out this weekend and just, just hammer on it as loud as I can. And uh, it says it travels one mile. So I'm th thinking if I don't have to do this every 200 meters, that would be great. Um, <laughs> Tanya said it works. Sounds like a duck call. That's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, so that's all the gadgets, right? That's all the gadgets. Now for the big box, or should I share some of the other things I've gotten? Let's do the big box. I am dying to get this open. It has been sitting at my house for a week. What do you guys think this is? I'm gonna wait because I have a few minutes of delay here. I really wanna know what you guys think this is, um, what your best guess is, and then I'll open it later. That's what I've decided, there we go. I'll open it in like one minute once I've given you guys a chance to tell me what you guys think it is. Um, and instead, I'll tell you about something I've been dying to tell you guys about for a while, which is this bad boy. My, oh, that's the one thing I forgot to link in the description. Oh no. Um, <laughs> Hilltop packs. I'll put it in the description afterwards. Actually, I'll see if I can do that really quickly here. Um, because Hilltop Pack deserves a shout out. They create awesome gear, ultra light, but ultra customizable. As you can see, the backcountry forward uh, picture and everything here. Here we go. I'm going to copy that, bring it over here. Put it there, save that, bring it back to here, and I'll put it even in the comments here. There you go. If you guys want to go to Hilltop Packs, you can go there. Um, Hilltop Pack, Ben, he is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, new shoes. These are some of your guys' gifts. We'll get to that in a second. But yeah, Ben, um, also, would you guys, like, what do you guys think of that design? Would anyone ever be interested in some backcountry forward gear? It's something I've been thinking about for a while. A little bit of an investment. I've got some ideas knocking around. Might be something I work on next year or the year after. But, uh, hmm, something to think about. I don't know. Um, and in here, <laughs> I've got Peak Refuel. <laughs> some more creme brulee because you can never have enough. Oh no, this is Huevos Ranchos and Scrambled Egg Mix, which that, well, that, that's okay too. Um, but Peak Refuel, I'm really excited. They just came up here to Canada. So if you're in Canada and you're looking for Peak Refuel, I've got really good news. You guys can go to brydensolutions.com, or is it .ca? Um, and you can buy .ca, it's brydensolutions.ca, and you guys can buy peak refuel up here in Canada. I know you guys might be thinking that's not that big of a deal, but up here in Canada, like so many of the other stuff I've already talked about, you can't always get it. So up here, you can go to brightensolutions.ca and they've agreed to actually partner with me for the GDT. They love that it's a local trail. They're here based in Alberta. They know about the GDT. They love helping backpackers and people get outdoors. So they've agreed to help partner with me and provide me with the first 30 days or 30 nights of my dinners, uh, which will be a mixture of peak refuel and maybe a few other options like back mountain house, etc. What do you guys think is better, mountain house or peak refuel? Now I'm gonna look at your guys' comments and say what you think I got. Okay, uh, a backpack, a tent or a new backpack. A new backpack, a new pack, a new tent, new shoes, um, 
There we go. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's, Omeos. I've never heard of Omeos. I have heard of those, um, what's it called? Gourmet, gourmet pack, packet gourmet, packet gourmet. I'd be interested in trying those. I haven't seen those up here in Canada yet. Okay, well, I picked up the sides so you guys can't see what it is. But, does that tell you what it is? Um, not really. It could be a lot of things still. But, pretty sure you know. I am not sure if this will take me, if this will be coming with me on the GDT. But there is a high likelihood that it will. My friends at Outdoor Vitals sent me. Woo -hoo -hoo. I haven't gotten a new backpack in a while. So, it feels really good to see this. First of all, this thing is so... Oh, sorry, bump the camera. Oh, really bumping the camera. There we go. This thing is so light. Um, wow, this is the Shadow Light backpack. <laughs> The Shadow Light. Have I tried Peak Refuels? They're better than Mountain I love Mountain House, Marty. Whoa, you're talking mad about Mountain House. I know I'm holding this backpack. I need to be talking about that. The new Outdoor Vitals pack. You got it. You got it. So, I'm really interested to take this pack out, to test it on the field. Um, it has a few really unique designs. It has two front pockets instead of one mesh pocket. Which I'm not sure how I feel about, but it allows for a front zipper, which could be a good option. Um, I don't know how often I'll use that, but some people love it. It is a roll top as well and has front webbing. And uh, there's that hydration hole. It does, it is a framed backpack. It has an aluminum frame on the inside there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But what's really cool, or one of the really cool things about it, is along with that internal frame, it comes with this kind of back pad, which doubles as a sit pad. I always bring sit pads out in the backcountry, um, but instead I won't. I'll just use this as uh, my sit pad when I need it, and then shove it back into my backpack when I don't. So, um... It's pretty scary taking a new backpack out on a through hike. I won't lie, I definitely have some hesitation, but I'm optimistic and I want to test it. So I'm going to be taking it out, really putting it through the gear. This is the 60 liter backpack. It's got the Spectra fiber. Uh, feels really, really a lightweight. The aerobic is, wow. It's really amazing. Um, I'm excited to test it. So I'll let you guys know how that goes for sure. Uh, keep you guys updated. I got a drink because I'm really dry. Backcountry forward. Keep moving forward. Um, this Maddie's uh, Maddie's fiance. Um, made this, first of all, she designed the logo, but she also put this on my Nalgene bottle and I love it. My favorite water bottle. Anyways, so what are you guys saying? What material is the sit pad made of? It's made out of just foam, like some sort of, I don't know, dense foam. Um, Jacob doesn't like Mountain House. Man, I love Mountain House. I'm sorry, you guys. Everything is better than Mountain House. It, okay. I'm not going to lie. Peak Refuel, I haven't had a lot of theirs, but their stuff does taste really good. But like, you guys, Mountain House lasagna, it just tastes like childhood comfort food. Like, am I the only one who feels that way? Okay. It's like a suitcase opening. Um, Gary, you went with the Z-Packs. Waymark, you went with the Z-Packs. I'd be really interested in hearing how that Z-Packs went. I have looked at, did you get the Arc Hall or the Arc Blast? Either way, I've been looking at those bags. They look really solid. Um, would you pack 
would you put pack liner in the OV? Yes, Yun, great, great question. Um, it's why I got these Nilo Flume, um, fume, Nilo Fume pack liners from Lightsmith. So these would be my pack liners for the Outdoor Vitals pack. Um, case in point. So that's kind of my plan. It does come with a pack liner. It might still be in the box, but they say every shadow light comes with pack liner. Um, it has a really cool inside pocket, which I didn't know about, which I guess you could put like a bladder in uh, if you wanted to use a bladder or just other odds and ends. That's an interesting idea. Okay, a few last things that I thought I'd unbo unbox with you guys. Uh, this one I actually won. This company sent me something I won from, um, from during like winter. Uh, have you guys ever heard of the company called um, Fire Maple? Fire Maple. Uh, well, I follow them on Instagram and they have sent, I won a contest on there and they sent me like this whole pack load of, of new stuff, including a whole new two person cook kit, which I would probably never use on my through hike, but is handy if I ever want to go out with my girlfriend or go out camping with other friends. So that's a super awesome um, deal there. I have used this on my last backpacking trip. In, it was a winter camping trip. It was for my birthday. Um, that video should be coming out within the next two weeks or so. Um, it's, it did not go as planned, but that's besides the point. Um, I decided instead of a cook pot, I was just doing a kettle because all I was going to do was cook myself some coffee and dehydrate dehydrated meals. So all I needed was a kettle. And it's got one of those fancy like heat transfer bottoms. So that's cool. But what was really cool and was really excited about was their titanium um, canister stove. But what was great about this is you can put your canister upside down. So in cold temperatures, this really works. And this weighs like, I can't remember exactly how much it weighs. I'm not going to bother weighing it, but I'm pretty sure it weighs like just a little bit more than my old canister stove, not like my BRS 2000, 3000 or my Boundless Voyage one, which I prefer. Those are ultra light, obviously. But like I started off with one of those just Amazon ones that had like the piezo ignition. And this weighs just as much as that. And it's way bigger and can have the inverted canister. I used this on the last trip and loved it. They also have the Polaris, uh, which is specifically designed to be an upright canister, but specifically for winter. It's uh, a, a pressure regulated gas stove. So that's kind of cool. And last, um, second last but not least See you guys for those of you guys who are leaving. Oh breakfast scam scrambled. Oh Arc air Gary Collins the arc air nice man. That's awesome. What color did you get? I'm curious um, I Have a few last things though. This is really cool. This comes from a company that I hate I've actually boxed it up, but I've already opened it and the fact is I haven't used it a lot um, but I hate that I love it so much because I hate this company <sighs> we'll get to that in a second I've also got a couple of new pillows and I will be really I just reviewed them I will be releasing these reviews within a couple of days this is the Trekology deluxe the Trekology De um, Aloft deluxe pillow which goes kind of as the deluxe version of their Aloft 2.0 pillow um, spoilers uh, don't buy it. It's garbage. I mean, it's not garbage. It's just not deluxe. Why would you get it? This is the Hikinsure uh, pillow, which is a little heavier than the Trekology pillow, but has this really soft fabric and uh, is a pretty good option. And you can watch the video if you want to see more of what I'm thinking about that. The other thing that I've got, and then I'm going to get to that last box and then I'm done. This I'm planning on taking on the GDT, an Emo Tensor um, insulated sleeping pad. That's my plan is to use this but I got to do a little bit more testing I'm planning on taking this actually out tonight because it's going to get about to minus two which is about mm, what's that minus 28 uh, Fahrenheit not minus 28 28 degrees Fahrenheit or so and that is a great test night for this so that's perfect because it usually gets to that temperature in the summer and um, if you guys have any questions um, let me <laughs> backpacking with jet bull or with the uh, Buckley says, is it the jet boil stash? Jet boil stash. Why would you say the jet boil stash? Because I hate this company. 
Do you know which companies I hate? Buckley, you know too much. You know too much. Before I get there, I just, I literally just put this down. Um, I forgot I was going to talk about this. This is the Ventus, um, Ventus hoodie, by the way. Uh, I did just release a video about this. I love this. I will be using this on the trail. Go check it out. It's only on Kickstarter for like, I think eight more days or seven more days. So go check that out. If you haven't already, you can watch that video. But yes, this is the Jet Boil stash. And here's the issue. I can't wait to do this video. Um, I've already got ideas for what I'm going to title it and how I'm going to call it. This is the pot that I hate to love. I hate to love it because um, it's actually a legit, really good system. Um, it's designed so it has this thing that holds your canister on top. It comes with a, uh, a fuel canister stabilizer. It comes, of course, with their version of, of a you know, stove, a titanium stove, and it all fits together in this beautiful little neat package. And it is really awesome. And um, I put all the stuff in there. I have actually used it just for one burn. Um, but I hate it because it is so insanely overpriced. And I would never pay that price. So um, I think that's insane. I think that's insane. Yeah. What do you guys think? Backpacking with Blister says he just got the stash. I love it. I also hate that I love it. <laughs> Backpacking with Buckley, I totally feel you. Um, is it a climate? No, I don't hate climates, Tyler. You hate climates. Blaze orange. It's hunting season here. Have to. There we go. Oh, you got the, that's Gary. You got the orange in uh, in your backpack. That's awesome. I love that. I love that blaze orange. That's great. Backpacking with Buckley. Oh, your sister works for the company. Oh, don't, don't, don't send them this video. Let's just say that. Um, you can send them the video when I release my review of this, this amazing, hor an amazingly horrible system that I love to hate um, because it's going to be ruthless. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, um, this has been a ton of fun. We're hitting right at the one hour mark, which is what I was hoping this would take me. I've got a massive mess now to clean up and I'm blaming you guys, you know, uh, my, my, my office was like reasonably clean before you guys came along. I'm just, just saying, um, just kidding. This was tons of fun. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching this. I've really enjoyed this time. I'm going to stick around and maybe answer some questions. If you guys have any questions, I'll answer them. But if not, I'll probably sign off here and clean up this mess and head on with the rest of the night. You guys will be seeing more and hearing more from me uh, in the coming days and weeks. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Seriously, follow me on Instagram, Backcountry Forward on Instagram. I am going to be posting more stories there, a few more photos. As of today, it's only 70 days till I leave on the Great Divide Trail. My plan is to be sending photos from the Great Divide Trail whenever I get cell service, which is really rarely, once every seven or so days. I'm going to send a bunch of photos to somebody who's going to be managing my Instagram account so that they will be able to still show those videos and stories and, uh, and photos from the Great Divide Trail while I'm out there, even while I'm on the trail. So follow me on Instagram. You can also reach out to me if you ever have any questions. I'd love to help you get moving forward into the back country. So, um, I've got a lot. <laughs> Tanya said it looked like a mess. It did kind of, but well, that was just because of the gear was, it wasn't that, it wasn't messy. It wasn't messy. Um, yeah, cool quest. Thank you so much. Cool quest. You guys are great. I so appreciate your encouragement. And I can't wait to share the GDT with you guys as well. Uh, Yoon, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking around. It was awesome. Um, yeah, see you guys all later. Honestly, this was tons of fun. I really appreciate it. It doesn't look like any of you guys got questions, which is uh, totally okay. Um, if you guys ever do have questions, like I said, I'm always here to help. Reach out, let me know, and keep moving forward. Jesse out. Now I just gotta figure out how on earth I'm gonna turn this thing off.